Greetings everyone, I am the Beard and this is Ostrif and welcome to my uh, short uh, Ostrif guide and we're going to kick off today uh, with a guide to farming or at least the basics of farming um, I think uh, that's 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 the good place to start I think it's where everyone kind of has the has the first questions so um, we're starting off on this little bit of a map as you can see over here I've currently got the game paused uh, we're uh, in the beginning of December and there's a reason why um, just so you know if I swing the camera around we do have a massive village behind us backing this up this is the village that we've built uh, through uh, my let's play series um, which you can find on the channel if you poke around so just so you know that's how we're we're getting this all done really so, I think the first uh, tip uh, when it comes to farming is to always build your farms at the beginning of winter. Um, and the reason why is that you want your builders um, and your construction crews to be focusing on building the farms uh, during winter and during summer. Uh, you want the people actually farming. So the first thing to do is actually place the farm. So let's go ahead and select the farm. And what we're going to do is we're going to swing the camera around here and we're actually just going to pull up the farm right down there. Now, as you can see, once you've placed the farm, you can't actually do anything. You can't spec out any of the fields, place any of the fields until the farm is built. So let's uh, unpause the game. Um, in fact, we're going to push it up to a three times speed and we'll swing the camera around slightly and uh, I'll join you once the construction crews have managed to, to uh, build this little farm and we'll kick off with the next set of tips. Uh, see you in a few seconds. Right, we'll come back everyone. Uh, we now have our farm up, which is over here, and as you can see I've paused the game again, and we are almost halfway through January, so that's uh, the reason why we do the builds of these during December. It roughly takes a month and a half to build a farm, particularly when there's such a large distance for, for the villagers to travel, or to bring resources, so we always try and build our farms during winter, so that's tip number one. Now that we've got the farm, we can go ahead and we can add fields, we can place the fields that will be attached to this farm. Now you can place uh, fix six, assign six fields to each farm in total. Um, you do that um, by clicking the add field button up here once you've clicked on the farm, so there's the field. Now what we're going to do is, you can kind of place the fields wherever you want, um, I recommend using this as the, if this is the entrance of the farm, all the workers come into the farm, gather their tools, seeds, and then come out and plant or harvest or, or whatever. So it's a really good idea to kind of try, I like to keep this as the main sort of thoroughfare or road, or farm road if you will. So I, I like kind of, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can put the first field out there like that. Um, the best size that I've found for farms is 25 units, so there's 25 units out to 25 units and then back out to 25 units. That is generally the best size for a farm. It is the most efficient, it gets uh, plowed, sowed and harvested quickly. So that's for field number one. Then we're gonna do field number two. Here's field number two, so let's do it again. Let's go out to 25 units, up to 25 units and then back out to 25 units, so there's two. Now I would also, next tip, is although there is six fields you can add to this farm, and we're gonna add all six now, it's always a good idea to add fields to a farm in an even number, never an odd number. So you can leave it at this and just have two farms. If you, I wouldn't add a third, I would add a third and a fourth. And if I had a third and a fourth, I wouldn't add a fifth, I'd add a sixth. So always even numbers of fields, and I'll explain to you now why that's important. So. Field number three, let's just add the third field. Let's just put the third field over here. Again, 25 units, 25 units, and 25 units. And there we've got our third field going up the hill here. Right, let's go back down. Um, and let's uh, click here again. We're gonna add the last three fields. So here is this one. So let's go to 25 units, uh, 25 units, and that is 25 units. Next one, 25 to 25 to 25 to 25, cool. And then let's do the last one, 25, 25, 25, 25. So we now have six fields. All of these fields, as you can see, are assigned to this farm. And you know that they're assigned to this farm because of these lines that get dropped down. All right, next step is to now 
activate these fields and start the crop rotation, but you can't start the crop rotation until you've hired a farm manager. So first things to do is let's hire a farm manager, hire the farm manager, let's unpause the game. Uh, there you go, uh, we'll unpause the game. Uh, we're running now and we should hire a farm manager fairly quickly. There you go, we've got a farm manager, so pause the game again. Um, pause the game again because we want to stay in winter before we've reached the end of uh, winter. So with just the farm manager here, we can now in high, high enable crop rotation. As you can see, we know that we can do that because we now have a plus button next to all of the fields. Right, the next important thing to notice is that there are these little markers here. So we've got the orange, the green, and the blue. These here represent the nutrient or mineral uh, quality of the soil. And different crops need different amounts of these various nutrients or minerals to grow. And I explained to you how to uh, sort of uh, make sure that you've, you've got that all kind of planned out. And as you can see at the moment, all of our fields are sitting at 100% of all of those uh, nutrients and minerals that we need to grow plants which is a really good thing. So let's start by um, planning out uh, our first two fields. Now we're always going to plan the crop rotation of fields in groups of two. That's why we like even numbers of fields. So first of all let's start here with wheat. So as you can see here wheat requires 50% of orange and 60% of green to grow. So if we grow wheat in this year we can then the next year we can we can't grow buckwheat because, oh, we can actually grow buckwheat because we've got 20% of the green left over. So there's more than that left enough over. And we can grow, um, we can definitely grow because there's enough of the blue mineral left over. So let's do that. Wheat, buckwheat, right? Now let's do this field here. Wheat, what else can we grow? We can also grow potatoes. So potatoes we can also grow because that's 50% and 50%, 30%, 30%. So there you go, we can grow wheat and potatoes. In fact, let's do this. Let's grow potatoes there and wheat so we get a bit of variety. Now, once those two crops have been grown, there's going to be not enough minerals left or nutrients left in these fields. As you can see, we would have exploited them all by growing first all the wheat, which would have used up 50% and 60%, and then the buckwheat, which would have used up 20% and 60% and then none of these here we could grow because these are all require more minerals than are available in the field after those two crops have been used to grow some more. So what do we need to do? We need to make that field fallow. fallow. So that'll reset us back up to 100% of these uh, nutrients. And this one, same thing, so fallow. Right, now this gets us down to why we get always, another good reason why we always do this in groups of two. So this means that our second field here, we want to try and have the fields alternating. So we don't want all of these fields fallow at the same time, and we don't want them all active at the same time. So what we're going to do on this one here, is we're actually going to leave this one, we're actually going to go make this fallow here, and this fallow here. So in this year, there's four fields active. And this year to so this down here what we can actually do is we're going to change this to fallow and fallow so that means at any year there's going to be at any point on any year there's going to be four fields that are working and producing and two that are fallow in this case right and it's going to cycle and you'll see how that cycle goes right now so Let's do the next set. So we've set our fallow cycle for all of the fields by setting up the first one. So let's now then go to the next field. So after this field here, we want to do wheat there, we wheat there. Let's grow um, sunflowers here and let's do buckwheat over here because sunflowers are really useful and we'll explain why sunflowers are useful just now. And then on this field here, let's do uh, sunflowers and let's do hemp because that's kind of cool. And then we're going to do a fallow and a fallow. And look at that. That means that over here, we've now going to have an overlap because the next fallow is going to be over here. Does that make sense? Am I making sense, everyone? Can you see? We'll get there just now. Let's do this field now so that we've done a fallow. So we can do a, we can do a let's do a sunflower here and a, uh, and a hemp. And let's do a sunflower here. And let's do a buckwheat because those work on the mineral sides. Of things and it's a good flow of things and then we can do a fallow and a fallow and as you can see we now have up here let's do a sunflower and a buckwheat and a uh, hemp and a sunflower now and then after this obviously this is going to be fallow and fallow and then look at that we've got two years of 
planting fallow to years of planting fallow. So that cycle is complete there, but that means that this is a four-year field working there, and it's fallow, right? Now we have these four, these two fields, and these two fields working, so four fields working, and two fallow. And we have two fields fallow, which means that we have these four fields working. Here we have these four fields working, and these two fields fallow. Now we've got these two fields working, these two fields fallow, so these two fields now need to work, so why don't we do a potato and a wheat here, and let's do a wheat and a potato over there, and then obviously it goes back to fallow the next year, because this just goes around in a cycle, so once it gets to here, it's just going to go straight back to the beginning again, so these are all complete, which means that over here we have two fallows, so over here we have two wheat, so why don't we do a potato over here, and let's do another potato over here. Right, because those work, the potatoes and the wheat work with the nutrients. And there we have the best crop rotation. So always two, four, always four fields active while two fields are fallow. And this is the best setup for a six field crop rotation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to activate all of our fields. Activate them all. So all of the fields are active. Uh, we'll get into plowing just now in another episode. But for now, because we're on the basics, we can turn the plowing off on all the fields and we can start hiring workers and press play um, and we are off to a royal rocking start um, as we approach the end of January and when summer kicks in the workers will stream in as they are now and we will start planting uh, the fields. In fact here come the first set of workers to prepare for the next season. Um, Right, I hope that's made sense. I hope that's giving you some directions on the crop rotations. Um, and if you want to see this uh, farm uh, grow for the season, stay and uh, we'll go forward in fast motion. Thank you for joining me. If you've enjoyed this little how-to, please leave a comment below and a like. Um, and I'll see you around soon. And uh, yeah, if you want to see this big village behind us, please check out the, please check out the Let's Play series. I'm The Beard, signing off.